I'm gonna to call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the city council. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Council member Glidden. Here. Yang. Here. Johnson. Here. Quincy. Here. Warsami. Present. Goodman. Present. Fry. Here. Palmasano. Here. Gordon. Here. Cano. Here. Wright. Here. Bender is absent. President Johnson. Here. There are 12 members present. Uh, we have a quorum present. Uh, next item on our agenda is adoption of the agenda. Uh, and I see we have a uh, motion by Councilmember Yang to amend the agenda to include under the order of resolutions, a resolution honoring uh, Reverend Dr. Noah Spencer S uh, Smith. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Then we have a motion by Councilmember Wright to amend the agenda to include under the order of business a resolution, um, which is in front of you. Um, I have it here. here. Ah, uh, 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 entitled uh, Botno LRT as part of a comprehensive transit system. Second. Is there a second on that? Any second. discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Uh, next we have an, uh, a motion then. Any other motions to amend the agenda? Seeing none, a motion okay. to approve the agenda as amended as so, an order. So second. Moved. moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Next, we have the acceptance of the minutes of the regular meeting of January 29th, 2016. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Next, we have referral of petitions, communications, and reports to the city officers to proper committees and departments. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed. That carries. Um, I am going to ask the committees, the council's uh, indulgence. We have a, a resolution uh, uh, from a uh, request from the Minnesota Wild, uh, and Bill uh, Huppenbecker from the Wild uh, is in attendance here. And um, I'm going to read the resolution, and then we'll deal with it uh, in the uh, committee uh, as, or in the agenda as part of the. Um, regular meeting so that Mr. Huppenbecker doesn't have to sit through our whole meeting. If I can find it, thank you, Council Member Glidden. Uh, this is a resolution uh, by council members uh, recognizing the National Hockey League's uh, stadium series. And uh, part of the resolution um, uh, process uh, as part of the process to light the 35W bridge uh, in particular colors, we have to have a request from a um, uh, a resolution of the city council. So we're going to recognize the National Hockey League's stadium series. And it says, whereas the Minnesota Wild is hosting the National Hockey League's stadium series games at TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis on February 20th and 21st of this year, and whereas this will mark the first NHL outdoor game in the state of hockey, and whereas this showcase event includes the alumni game with former North Stars and Wild players versus Chicago alumni on the February 20th, and whereas the Minnesota Wild will play a regular season game versus the Chicago Blackhawks on February 21st, 2016, and whereas the state of hockey has shown incredible support for what is expected to be a sold out event, and whereas it is hoped that the successful stadium series weekend will lead to attracting the Winter Classic NHL's premier outdoor game, and whereas the Minnesota Wild has requested that the Minnesota Tra Department of Transportation light the 35W bridge in red, green, and navy blue on the day of those stadium series games. And I need the second page. Thank you so much. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Minneapolis that the City Council supports the Minnesota Wilds request to light the 35W bridge for the Stadium Series hockey games. So, thank you, and we will approve that as part of our regular uh, meeting. Next on our agenda, then, are the reports of the standing committees, and the first committee is Committee of the Whole, and that committee is chaired by the Council Vice President, Elizabeth Glidden. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, we have six items that will be moved forward today. Uh, five of them are 
reappointments of charter department heads, including reappointment of the chief of the fire department, John Friedel, uh, and these are all reappointments, excuse me, reappointment of the director of civil rights, Velma Corbell, reappointment of the chief of police, Janae Harto, and reappointment of the city attorney, Susan Siegel, and finally reappointment of the city coordinator, Spencer Kronk. And all of these uh, would be for a two year term beginning January 4th, 2016. The sixth item is a contract for a minimum wage increase study and this would be authorizing the contract with uh, representatives from the University of Minnesota, Howard University, Rutgers University, and the Economic Policy Institute. So that is the selected research team as well as a staff direction requesting an opinion from the office of the city attorney on local authority to implement a proposed change in minimum wage to be submitted as a confidential memorandum covered by attorney client privilege. And I will move all six items. Councilmember Glidden has moved uh, all six items on the committee of the whole. Um, anyone here to speak? Uh, Councilmember Yang. Um, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to pull um, item number two and uh, item number six uh, for discussion. Okay. Uh, I think what I what what I'm planning to do is just have indiv individual votes on each of the department head uh, appointments, so people can speak as they're brought forward. Then, and six, um, we'll take that separately. Okay. Okay. All right. Then um, uh, I see the mayor has joined us. Madam Mayor, did you care to speak? Uh, thank you, Madam President. No, I just renew my request that folks support the reappointment of our slate of department heads. Great. Thank you so thank much. You. All right. Then on the reappointment of the chief of the fire department, uh, it is, this action is approving the reappointment by the executive committee of John Friedel to the appointed position of chief of the fire department for a two-year term beginning January 4th, 2016. Any discussion? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That uh, is approved. Congratulations, Ms. Friedel, Chief Friedel. And next we have the reappointment of the Director of Civil Rights. Uh, the, the motion is to approve the reappointment by the Executive Committee of Velma Corbell to the appointed position of the Director of Civil Rights for a two-year term beginning January 4th, 2016. Any discussion? Council Member Yang. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to apologize uh, to uh, Council Vice President Ed Glidden for um, dumping some of uh, public safety work on the Committee of the Whole. I really appreciate the time that you allowed for uh, this matter to be taken. Uh, into consideration, especially, you know, with regards to some of the complaints out there about a notice requirement. And so I really appreciate that. Uh, to speak on this uh, reappointment, um, although Director Corbel's appointment seems like a foregone conclusion, I want to say clearly that I oppose it. And if this means an omission from the state of the city, so be it. Uh, when Director Corbel stood in front of the Public Safety Committee, and listed her accomplishments. She could have addressed some of her failings as well, but she didn't. Uh, two years ago, there was controversy surrounding her reappointment. Former employees and the, and the union representing them spoke of the Civil Rights Department as a toxic environment where management retaliated against employees and told them not to speak out. There was also a pending lawsuit against her in the Civil Rights Department for workplace and civil rights violations. The lawsuit was settled shortly after re her reappointment for more than $38,000. We as a city paid to hire a management consultant to improve Director Corbel's management skills. Here are some of the highlights of her management skills. Accusing her employees of laziness and thievery, threatening her employees and their careers by telling them that she knows a lot of people, and encouraging her employees to not talk to their union. Additionally, a labor management committee was supposed to be formed to work on improving employer-employee relations in the department. To date, my understanding, the Labor Management Committee has not been formed. This, this council before me directed the Civil Rights Department to complete a study of the concentration of level three sex offenders in the city 
It took 28 months for the department to report back to the council. And when the department reported back, the study told us what we already knew, providing no solutions to our problems. This council before me directed the Civil Rights Department to lead in creating a racial equity assessment, the racial equity toolkit for the city. Took, it took over 20 months to get an incomplete product. The Civil Rights Department had promised to report quarterly on results from their contract compliance unit. Until I insisted on this quarterly report in 2014, the department had gone almost two years without providing a single report. I've learned a great lesson here. Write staff directions with the deadline and put it on my calendar. After her reappointment in 2014, Director Corbel attacked me at an African American DFL caucus event by stating, and I'm going to quote this, I don't think he knows he's supposed to represent the community. Uh, let me say for the record that after seeing these comments, a few of my colleagues up here expressed their disappointment at her statement. Uh, you can have your own interpretation of this statement. My interpretation is that a charter department head went after me for being a Hmong person in a predominantly African American ward as if my race made me incapable of representing others. This coming from our civil rights director, the person charged with upholding the civil rights of all in the city of Minneapolis. If our civil rights director can't uphold the dream of us not being judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character, we are in trouble. I've seen the civil rights department's values and they include respect and accountability. Well, that should mean that the Civil Rights Department should respect the council and be accountable by getting things done in a timely manner. So why does all this matter? As the city of Minneapolis moves to provide more employee protections through the Working Families Agenda, I, I'd encourage us to look within. The Civil Rights Department should not be a place where there are allegations of hourly employees being asked to work overtime during the weekend and on weekends without getting paid. The Civil Rights Department should not be a place where there are allegations of a hostile work environment. The Civil Rights Department should not be a place where there are allegations of retaliation. The Civil Rights Department should be a place where civil rights are being protected, not violated, where employment and labor laws are enforced, not violated, and where collective bargaining rights are respected, not trampled. I hope the Civil Rights Department's employees have, have not given up on asking for help and fighting for their civil rights. We are Minneapolis, one of the first cities to have a civil rights department. If our civil rights department cannot live up to our great ideals, how can we expect others to? I said this two years ago and I'll repeat it. Quote, the irony of a civil rights department that operates in some ways to violate some laws, labor or civil rights is really just disappointing to me. I think that we're going against our values by reappointing Director Corval. I am committed to a res respectful, positive work environment for everyone at the city. Thus, I am voting ag against this reappointment. Is there any further discussion? Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much, Madam President. I just wanted to um, note a little uh, work that I did between the committee and this meeting. Um, I actually um, was the author of the uh, staff direction that I did um, last time for the appointment. And it called for, for three things. One was uh, for the uh, um, city coordinator um, to consult with AFSCME representatives to consider the reinstatement of creation of a new Civil Rights Department Labor Management Committee. So it actually wasn't requiring the committee to be formed. It was asking our coordinator to explore the possibility. I think that was explored a little bit. Um, I did take the opportunity to reach out to AFSCME representation and actually um, heard from them that they, uh, had gotten communications, I think, and a sense that um, the climate in the department had improved dramatically. I think there were some other changes in uh, leadership and management that may have contributed to that, but that was just good news that there were no longer concerns. I don't think they would be adverse to creating a labor management committee either in the future, but it no longer was the pressing matter that it had been last time. It, it, those of you may recall, we actually had the, the AFSCME representative up here um, kind of warning us about the, the work climate. The second piece of the staff direction was um, asking the city coordinator to work with the mayor's office, the civil rights director, and if deemed appropriate outside management consulting services to evaluate and as warranted improve management practices in the civil rights department related to employee satisfaction and maintaining a healthy workplace environment. Um, this uh, aspect of the staff direction I think was implemented to its fullest. 
Um, the mayor's office was involved. The civil rights director did get some outside uh, executive coaching support. There was a firm that came in and did a survey of the department and some follow-up, and actually there's a, a plan that was implemented in the department, uh, and they um, kind of, uh, I forget the title of the committee, but there's a, a work group of staff that have formed uh, basically a workplace environment uh, <laughs> committee, and, and, and so th that I feel is very positive. I also did get some uh, uh, briefing from uh, HR department about the, the progress of that and heard about it, um, which gets to the uh, final part of that staff direction was to report back to the executive committee on the status of these efforts by July 1, 2014. Um, I would note that this was not done. Um, I'll also note that it, this was the staff direction to the previous city coordinator, so um, that it wasn't we can't hold the current city coordinator responsible necessarily. Although once he came in, he really did help to make sure that I got the information I needed. I had a briefing and I suspect the executive committee individually got information and was briefed, but that report back never occurred. So that's, uh, th that's disappointing. And um, I think it's important that maybe when we, uh, as, as council member Yang said, to put things on our own calendars <laughs> for our staff direction so we can help try to make sure to do the work and make sure they come forward. But, Long story short, or maybe long story long, um, as a result of that, I uh, my I have the same confidence level that I had in this reappointment, and I will be supporting the reappointment of uh, uh, the civil rights director. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. No. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Borsani. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 11 ayes and one nay. That appointment is, is approved. Congratulations. Uh, next, we have the reappointment of the Chief of Police Department, and it's a motion to approve the reappointment by the Executive Committee of Janae Harteau to the appointed position of Chief of the Police Department for a three year term. Police Chief has a unique three year term. A uh, three year term beginning January 4th. 2016. That motion is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsani. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That uh, reappointment is approved. Congratulations, Chief. Next, we have the reappointment of the city attorney, and the motion is to approve the reappointment by the executive committee of Susan Siegel to the appointed position of city attorney for a two-year two term beginning January 4th, 2016. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all, uh, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsani. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Right. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That appointment is approved. So congratulations, Ms. Siegel. Oh, there she is. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the reappointment of the city coordinator. Uh, and motion is to approve the reappointment by the executive committee of Spencer Croft to the appointed position of city coordinator for a two-year term beginning January 4th, 2016. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, uh, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsani. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. <clears throat> President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That appointment, reappointment is approved. Congratulations, Mr. Krong. Oh, there he is. Okay. Uh, next, we have then, uh, and I just I just want to say I, I said this the other day um, that um, the city of Minneapolis is so fortunate to have these great leaders that are willing to serve uh, in executive leadership in our city. Uh, we are a well managed city, and it is because of the good work um, that our department heads uh, do. And so I want to thank them for their willingness to serve uh, and um, the. Uh, commitment of their time, um, help uh, uh, just going above and beyond um, uh, what we need um, to run this uh, great city. So I thank you so much for your willingness to serve. Thank you.
Next, we have the contract for a minimum wage study, wage increase study, uh, authorizing a contract for a minimum wage study, Minneapolis minimum wage study to be conducted by the competitively selected research team consisting of representatives of the University of Minnesota, Howard University, Rutgers University, and the Economic Policy Institute. And then a second staff direction requesting an opinion from the office of the city attorney on local authority to implement a proposed change in minimum wage to be submitted as a confidential memorandum covered by attorney client privilege. On that motion, uh, Council Member Yang, you wish to speak? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I wanna speak quickly, uh, but first I wanna say that, you know, for item uh, 6.2, I'm gonna support that, uh, but for item one, um, I just wanna say that I, I, I can't support that, and the reason being that, um, you know, from what I have seen, I just don't know whether we have the authority as a city to uh, raise the minimum wage. And, uh, you know, seeing that there was a fight at the state for the minimum wage about two years ago, uh, I just feel like we would be in a better position once we get a, a legal opinion as to whether we have authority to actually uh, spend this uh, type of money. I mean, it's not just chum change. It's I believe it's about $150,000, and I'd rather uh, have a sense of whether we have authority before we move forward. So I'm not gonna support 6.1. Uh, Council Member Fry. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to be sure that we were gonna be separating items we one and separate. two. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chair. Council Member Gordon. Thank you, Madam President. I'm actually excited about both of these items. I think that going forward with the study makes complete sense here so that we get more information. Uh, and I think <laughs> getting that more information might help us understand better about what's going on in other cities and other places of the world and if there's some kind of different um, legislative authority or structure around that that would be great information to have as we try to move forward and do something here uh, in, in Minneapolis and in Minnesota um, this is a very significant issue especially when you look at in terms of what we want to accomplish with equity and trying to lift up the lives of all the Minneapolis residents and all the people who work work in our city I think it's very appropriate that we uh, um, investigate this and, and that we study it. And if it, uh, I'll also be supporting uh, number two. And number two, I think, is probably going to come back with sort of what we all know is already out there, which is uh, there's a lack of, of clarity maybe in state law. I would say in that case that certainly the city has authority to do things that we're not prohibited from doing. Um, from, well, but. We'll find out, so I'm gonna support both of those and I'm excited to see them coming forward. I think we've seen in the past when the information that we get, the investment we get, and um, gathering accurate information can really help us determine what are the best steps to take forward. And I think get more knowledge um, is good. So I really look forward to the, the report and it coming through and I'm uh, impressed by the uh, uh, people and the groups that respond. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to say that I uh, approve both items and specifically uh, when it comes to item number one, even though that's a legal gray area for us on whether or not we have uh, the authority to implement a citywide minimum wage, the study is uh, incredibly important regardless, even if we think that uh, we might not uh, have that authority, certainly at a statewide level that would enable us uh, to have information as to whether or not it would make sense for the state to pursue uh, further minimum wage increases. I think the other piece too is uh, obviously, as uh, my colleague Councilmember Fry has pointed out, uh, it is a gray area for us. And we saw just yesterday in the Star Tribune that uh, activists are very interested in pushing a ballot initiative on this. And so I think that this is timely information to have because a lot of the proponents and opponents of this, uh, they're pointing to studies from different cities around the nation with uh, different situations than us. They don't have another major uh, urban center directly across the river from them. Uh, they have different industries and economic factors. And so I think that this is uh, incredibly important for us to have so that we understand both the pros and the cons of something like this with uh, as good of data as possible. And so uh, I would hope that uh, my colleagues can support item number one. Any further discussion uh, on the motion? Um, I, I just want to say that I, I'm going to support uh, doing this study, but I find it um, disappointing that um, we're going to spend $150,000 uh, to get uh, information when it's 
clear just through uh, conversation and people's uh, council members, um, what would you call it, postings, um, um, information to their constituents that they've already made up their minds um, about whether or not it makes sense. So that's, if, if that's the case, then it is $150,000 down the drain. Um, and I, uh, you know, Councilmember Johnson, you made really good points about the value of information, not just for us, but for um, the regional solution or the statewide solution that would make the most sense in this case. So I appreciate that you bolstered my uh, uh, desire to, to get that information in front of us. So um, I think I'm going to support uh, going forward with the study, but we'll separate uh, both of these um, items. So the first is authorizing a contract for a Minneapolis minimum wage increase study to be conducted by the competitively selected research team uh, it, that includes the University of Minnesota, Howard University, Rutgers University, and the Economic Policy Institute. So clerk call the roll on six, uh, sub number one. Council Member Glidden. Aye. Yang. No. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami is absent. Goodman. No. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are nine ayes and two nays. That item is approved. On item two then, approving six uh, sub number two, approving a staff, staff direction requesting an opinion from the office of the city attorney on local authority to implement a proposed change in minimum wage to be submitted as a confidential memorandum covered by attorney-client privilege. Uh, any discussion on that, Councilman Yang? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Madam President. Um, you know, I spoke about this a little bit earlier, and um, I would like to see a date for when this gets okay. done. Okay. And um, I would, I guess, I'd like to ask the city attorney what, sure. what's a reasonable time frame. Okay, um, Ms. Siegel. Uh, Madam President and uh, Council Member Yang, um, it, uh, in light of the transition and retirement of Peter Ginder in two weeks, um, I would like at least two council cycles. So a month from now, that's, if, if that's acceptable. That, that, that's great. I mean, the yeah, end, of, end of March would be wonderful. Great. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that would be wonderful. We've already yeah. done a lot of research, but um, with, with the transition, I, I'm going to do more personal work on it myself, and that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So two cycles. Yeah, Madam President, could I just make an amendment yeah. uh, that says that uh, the city attorney's office should report back by the end of March? That sounds fine. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. I'm sorry. No. One no. Councilmember Fry votes no. Um, then uh, approving the staff direction uh, to get an opinion from the city attorney on uh, the city's authority uh, to be submitted in a confidential memorandum covered by attorney client privilege uh, by the end of March. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami is absent. Goodman. Aye. Fry. No. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 10 ayes and one nay. That uh, is approved. Next, we have the Community Development and Regulatory Services Report. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Goodman. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Madam President. We have nine items in front of us for approval this morning. Item number one is the reappointment of the CPED Director, Craig Taylor. Item two are our liquor, business, and gambling license applications. Three, four, and five are uh, liquor or liquor and rental license conditions on businesses. Item six are contracts with various uh, neighborhood business associations for our Great Streets Facade Improvement and Grant Program. Item seven, I'll be moving the CDRS item, which is the Green Zone Initiative. Item eight, I need to pull for an amendment. And item nine are modifications to our semi-tax increments financing plan. With that, I'll move items one through seven and item nine for approval. Councilmember Goodman has moved items one through seven and item nine for approval. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Councilmember Gordon. I wanted to comment on item seven. Okay, why don't you go ahead? I just didn't want this to, uh, to just pass without some comment. This is the approval of our green zone policy. 
And also, uh, it, it should be noted, and you can see in the agenda, there's actually two recommendations, one that was coming from the health uh, environment and community engagement and one that's coming from uh, community development and I'm supportive and I helped co-author uh, the, the resolution that's coming forward from CD so I'm very supportive of that um, if you uh, have the opportunity to go look back in the uh, uh, in the records of this you'll see that it was a long journey to get this uh, uh, resolution here before us today and there was a lot of work that went into this and I wanted to make sure to acknowledge um, Kelly Moman from the sustainability office who um, just was calmly and, and consistently working with staff, working with community members, working with organizations and groups and, and working with council members to make sure we were informed about this and kind of leading the effort, even though this is something we created and kind of uh, dumped on the sustainability office from our climate action plan where we called it out and then our implementation plan saying this is something we want to move forward on. And really it's a, an, an idea that's relatively new. Other cities are certainly doing it. But it's where we look at uh, uh, racial justice and we look at environmental sustainability and we see where they can come together in, in our city. And I think it's got enormous potential here. I also uh, have to thank my uh, partners on the council. There's many authors to this and uh, uh, worked with uh, many people to get it supported unanimously at the first committee that it went to. And there were amendments at, at that committee as well. And, and at that point, there were two authors, uh, Council Member Andrew Johnson and Alonzo Cano help work on it and then when it went through the next committee um, we were joined by other council members and I really appreciate the extra time and effort that council members Fry and Reich put into trying to refine this and, and make it the best thing. Again I think this does put us in a great position to end up with a green zone policy that will really work for the city and that's what this do this is doing really it's creating a work group now a staff group with community input so that we can develop our green zone policy. So. It's just kind of to talk about and form the policy, and that policy is going to have to come back to the council. So we may uh, just be ready, everybody. We might be going through something similar next round when that policy gets developed and the recommendation comes up to us, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, and I think it's going to be important that we do have some community involvement and engagement in that. And I, and on that note, I also want to thank um, SIAC to put some some effort into this, and also um, other community groups, including the. Um, uh, and I can't remember the full name of the, of, of the group, but there was a, a group that was involved with the State Department of Health that was looking at health assessment and impacts in communities that really put some time and effort in combing through the uh, resolution and looking at this and, and adding some support. We actually have already had one um, work group where we had a consultant from California come in and talk about what they did there. So I think there's a lot of excitement uh, here in the city for moving forward on this. And I think by with this task force, we're going to do so in a thoughtful and informed way. And so thank you everybody for your patience and your hard work on this. Any further discussion then on community development regulatory services number one through seven and item nine? Seeing none, click call the roll. Council Member Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That, uh, those items are adopted. Then on item eight, Council Member Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I have an amendment on item number eight. It's in front of you. Uh, it was just an oversight with regard to adding the operating license fee for a car sharing program in the amount of $450. Uh, this was emailed out yesterday. Um, I also want to just thank the Transportation and Public Works Committee folks for doing all of the information and policy on this. It came to us first just by nature of the agenda, but it was really TMPW that uh, dove into this the most. So I'll move <coughs> the amendment in front of you. Councilman Goodman has moved um, the license fee schedule to add to the car sharing uh, operator's license fee in the amount of $450. Is there a second on that amendment? Yes. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, then item eight has been amended. Um, clerk will call the roll unless there's more discussion. Clerk call the roll on item eight. Council member Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Hamasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Wright. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That uh, report is adopted, that item is adopted. Next, we have the Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee, and that committee is chaired by Councilmember Gordon. 
Thank you, Madam President. The Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee is bringing five items forward for consideration today. Um, three of them are ordinance amendments. Uh, the first is a passage of an ordinance amending Title III having to do with energy data, clarifying the standards of acceptable energy data and stating the schedule of public disclosure on that data. Second item is passage of an ordinance, again, Title 13, um, having to do with uh, laundries and dry cleaning establishments, prohibiting the use of certain solvents, uh, including PERC and amending enforcement provisions. This would essentially uh, prohibit the use of PERC and similar uh, toxic uh, hazardous materials in dry cleaners um, in the future. Uh, it would allow them to continue with those that are already operating, just to be clear. The uh, third item is approving the uh, reappointment of the Commissioner of Health, Gretchen Musicant, being uh, appointed for a two-year term. The fourth item is authorizing extension of some contracts uh, to, to continue pr providing audit services, financial management, and filing support for contracted neighborhood organizations through our Neighborhood Community Relations Department. And the fifth item is uh, passage of an ordinance um, repealing Title IV of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances relating to animals and fowl and replacing it with Title IV entitled Animal Care and Control. Um, I would like to uh, move all uh, the first four items, I should say. And I know there's some amendments for the fifth item that I'd like okay. to set that aside. Councilmember Gordon has moved uh, items one, two, uh, three, and four on the health, uh, energy, and uh, excuse me, Environment and Community Engagement uh, Committee. Any discussion on any of those items? Uh, seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Morsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Uh, that, those items are adopted on item five then, Councilmember Gordon? Yeah, I would uh, like to move this so that we can um, move on to some amendments. So uh, I think Councilmember Goodman and I believe that uh, Council President Johnson have amendments. Okay. Councilmember um, Gordon has moved item five. Councilmember Goodman? Uh, thank you, Madam President. I have an amendment uh, in front of you uh, with regard to the fee schedule for the adoption of dogs and cats specifically. I noted this in um, Committee of the Whole, and I'd like to m move approval of my amendment and then speak to it, if I may. Councilmember Goodman has moved uh, an amendment. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Councilmember Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. It's been my experience on the City Council that there is almost no more emotional issue to discuss than discussing uh, animal control. Uh, there have We have come a very, very long way. When I first came onto the Council, we had folks who were afraid of dogs and didn't want us to be adopting dogs and were concerned about the adoption process. And here we are today talking about how we actually reduce our euthana euthanasia rate of animals and adopt more dogs. My amendment today would uh, be an amendment to the staff recommendation to drop the fee for res Minneapolis residents to $50 for dogs and $50 for cats, but keep the staff recommendation with regard to the increase for non-residents. Um, you may wonder why I'm trying to separate out residents and non-residents, and I'll note that it costs about $2.7 million to operate our animal control function, and that means Minneapolis residents are already paying for everybody to adopt dogs and cats and other fowl and animals that we adopt out. Only about a little over a half a million dollars actually comes from fees, fines, licensing. All of the rest of it is general fund money. So I would make the argument that Minneapolis residents are already paying uh, for people to adopt animals. I'll also note, um, I have some experience in this area serving on the board and founding an organization that deal with animal humane type issues. And I don't think that there's anything that's more difficult uh, for a dog or cat than being captured in a crate or cage and kept in an animal control facility. Being in animal control facilities just by nature make animals uh, nervous. 
uh, they create behavior issues, and there's certainly the uh, possibility of uh, the spread of disease or infection. So our goal should be not only to adopt animals, but to get them out to the public as fast as we can. And so that means that the fee should be as low as it can be, uh, so that we can make sure that pet ownership is accessible, pets are more adoptable, and keeping them around in our facility will make sure that they have less health and behavior related issues. Um, I do think uh, it's fair in this case to take a look at this in a way that is about how we're going to get these animals that are unfortunately property out of our system. And I'll make a comparison to um, lots that we sell from the committee that I chair. So we know that uh, property is valued at more than a dollar. We know that a lot on the north side or south side is worth more than one dollar. Um, but we uh, give them and sell them to people for a dollar so that we don't have to keep up the cost of maintaining those lots over time. And there is a direct correlation, although the costs are less, for keeping animals in our animal control facility. Um, the longer we keep them, the more difficult it becomes and the higher cost we have ourselves. Uh, so I didn't spend a lot of time uh, talking to you all about this issue. I think it's uh, kind of obvious in terms of what we should do. I have done a lot of research on it and can speak to any questions anyone would have about my proposal, but I'd appreciate your support today. Uh, any discussion on Councilmember Goodman's amendment? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Uh, next, um, I will, uh, I hope everyone has in front of them an amendment by me. Uh, just uh, clarifying some <coughs> definitions um, that are uh, used in the uh, ordinance and uh, it um, essentially is okay with staff. I've, I've run this by them um, and it's done at um, the request of a uh, rescue organization uh, in North Minneapolis that uh, rescues uh, chickens and um, wants to make sure that uh, people who have um, chickens that, and, dis, and desire to have them as a companion animal are allowed to do so. So um, you should have these definitions in front of you and there's just a couple strikeouts. Any discussion? Is there a second on my amendment? Second. Okay. Uh, Council Member Gordon. Thank you very much. I just wanted to note that these uh, actually seem very consistent to some other amendments that were made at the committee uh, to kind of clarify that um, Birds can be uh, either agricultural or um, pets, and companion pets, and that's certainly allowed and supported. So um, I'm very supportive of these amendments. I don't think they dramatically change the ordinance, but they will clarify some things and I think make it, um, it it's a nice gesture. Thank you. Any uh, discussion then on the amendment? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Uh, next, then, um, the uh, Animal Care and Control Regulation Ordinance, as amended, is in front of us. Any further discussion? Councilmember Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I'd li like to acknowledge uh, everyone who has made uh, amendments on this uh, very important issue. Uh, one of the things that we uh, really, uh, in my opinion, need to do is to look at the actual costs associated with uh, setting adoption fees as part of our fee uh, schedules. And so I've uh, offered a, uh, I'd like to offer a staff direction that is uh, directing uh, finance and MAC staffs. Uh, that staff direction, I believe, is in front of you now. Sorry for the late notice. Um, but it uh, basically asks for a report, uh, cost analysis, uh, to be reported back to the Ways and Means Committee um, in the uh, second quarter of this year, which should give us ample time for consideration for other fee schedule changes that we'll be making as part of the uh, budget uh, development process. So I'd like to offer that as a staff direction. Thank you, Councilmember Quincy has offered a staff direction. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Uh, then on item four, excuse me, five, any further discussion? Okay, you didn't have, okay. Uh, Council Member Andrew Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I'll keep it short because I made comments at a committee meeting, but just once again, I want to thank staff for all of their work on this. Uh, it's just been an incredible effort, uh, especially Joel Fussy in the uh, city attorney's office who 
put so much time into this language as well. I mean, it's 60 pages worth of ordinance changes, which is, I think, the largest uh, anybody uh, who's been at the city has seen come through. And so it was a monumental effort. It took well over a year, a lot, a lot of community engagement around it. And kudos to staff and everyone, all the organizations, all the members of the community, the volunteers, uh, the MAC advisory committee members, the staff that uh, participated in this. It's just uh, phenomenal to see, and I know it's going to improve the outcomes uh, for animals across our city for a generation to come. Further discussion on um, item five? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Council member Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That uh, item is adopted. Uh, next, we have the Taxes Committee, and that committee is chaired by Councilmember Warsami. I thank you, Madam President. And the Taxes Committee has two items to report. The first is the passage of resolution establishing the City of Minneapolis's 2016 Board of Appeal and Equalization. And the second item is approving the following appointments to that board. And the appointments are as follows uh, Ted Merinak, an appraiser. Uh, Sandy Losher, a realtor, Pat Werner, a realtor, Earl Netwall, a freeholder, and Jeff Larson, a freeholder. And I will move both items for your approval. Councilmember Warsami has moved the Taxes Committee report. Any discussion on those items? Councilmember Yang? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I want to be real quick about this. I want to thank all the folks who um, have been appointed, and I want to give a, uh, special attention to Sandy Losher, who is a Ward 5 constituent. Um, we're serving for the past 10 years. I, I think that's just wonderful. Okay, on the taxes committee report, uh, clerk call the roll. Council member Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. No on two, aye on one. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes uh, on the first uh, item, and there are 11 ayes and one nay on the second. Those items are approved. Next, we have the Transportation Public Works Committee report. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Reich. Uh, thank you, Madam President. The committee forwards 11 items today. Uh, item one is the uh, Blue Line Light Rail um, uh, LRT Extension Municipal Consent. Uh, it's a resolution approving the preliminary design plans for the route. Uh, for the Blue Line LRT extension project uh, within the city of Minneapolis. Item two is the Blaisdell Avenue South uh, reconfiguration uh, from 31st Street West to 40th Street West. And there's a variance request there uh, to deviate from the uh, MnDOT uh, state aid operation rules to reconfigure that street as designed. Uh, item three is the car sharing program policy and it's adopting the car sharing policy uh, uh, as listed in the documents we have today. Uh, the following items were referred to Ways and Means Committee. Uh, item four is the 44 or 54th Street uh, West uh, reconstruction project, approval of assessments and area abandonments uh, for that project. Uh, item five is the 26th Avenue North, uh, Lindale Avenue North uh, to the Mississippi River reconstruction project. Uh, again, a series of resolutions to proceed with that project. Uh, item, and then there's a series that are uh, TPW uh, related and others were related from uh, the Ways and Means Committee. And then item uh, six is the 6th Avenue North uh, paving project and it's a series of resolutions to proceed with that project. Item seven is the grant acceptance from Henna County for sidewalk recycling containers. Uh, item eight is a contract amendment with Chemstone products uh, to provide uh, uh, materials for our work. Contract amendment is uh, with engineering construction innovation storm tunnel repairs, item nine. Item 10 is the contract with Eureka recycling for processing and marketing commingled recyclables. And item 11 is the bid for hauling and disposal of agricultural lining materials. And that was a low bid from Pools Brothers uh, Trucking Incorporated. Uh, Madam President, I move all 11 items. Councilmember Wright has moved uh, the Transportation and Public Works report. Anyone want to pull anything off, discuss any of these items? Councilmember Yang. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I'd like to pull item number one off, and I'd like to make comments on number um, Five as well. Okay. Mm. Right. Mm. 
Why don't uh, anyone else? Councilmember Gordon. I just wanted to make a brief, well, I also wanted to put up item number one, but I wanted to make a brief comment on number 10. Okay. All right. Um, why don't we have our brief comments then on uh, items five and item 10, and then we'll uh, pull off item uh, one for discussion. So, uh, Councilmember Yang on item five. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, item five is the 26th Avenue North uh, reconstruction. And, um, you know, I, I want to start by thanking Public Works for working so hard on this. Um, it's, you know, from the start, uh, it was uh, promised as a two year project. Um, and, you know, for myself, I mean, there are a few things better than seeing reduced assessments. We've just seen that in the past uh, week. Uh, while paying for necessary infrastructure is very important, I appreciate public work staff uh, doing everything in their power to help reduce costs borne by the people I represent. Uh, 26 Avenue North has been a problem for a long time, and uh, in my view, I mean, it's probably, you know, over a decade due for this uh, to have happened, and I'm glad that it's happened. It's one of the few public works uh, reconstruction projects in which people were actually celebrating more than complaining. So I, I appreciate that, uh, but there is one thing I want to reiterate, though, and I, I'm urging public work staff to move heaven and earth to get this project done this year. The promise was two years. If we go past this year, it will be a three-year project, and that's not good for the folks who need 26th Avenue North. Um, although the con reconstruction of 26 from the parkway to the river is considered um, by um, staff to be you know, a two-year project, um, I want it to be that. I'd like to see that um, because of the impact that it will have on the residents who need it. Uh, if this project goes into the 2017 construction season, it will not be a two-year project, but instead a three-year project. The people of the north side deserve more than having a major east-west thoroughway torn up for three years. And so I ask the good folks of Public Works to do everything they can to get this project done in just two years. Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just want to make it clear for the record. Um, you know, I noted that there was a, two reports from TPW and Ways and Means. Uh, I just want to highlight for the record to make it uh, very clear that there are two dollar amounts. The dollar amount that is correct uh, moving forward for the record is the one in the Ways and Means uh, item one, which lists the two, uh, two, two million forty six thousand five hundred eighty five dollars as the official amount. So I just want to make that clear for the record, Madam President. Okay. Then on item, um, Councilmember Gordon, item 10, Councilmember Gordon. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to note that um, there was a lot of community uh, involvement and input in this decision. I was surprised by the enthusiasm that I heard from the community and the city and residents about the potential of having Eureka get this contract uh, for recycling. There's obviously some incredibly high expectations in the community and there's a sense that Eureka can do amazing things and can do more than just um, uh, market and process our recycling, but maybe be a, a great partner in helping us accomplish our solid waste, uh, zero waste goals. And um, so I just wanted to say that I uh, share some of those, uh, that excitement. And I think it's time that the city council as policymakers that we also raise our expectations of, of Eureka and let you, let you and them know that we have high expectations and getting your involvement in this work uh, could be significant to us. Councilmember Fry. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. I'm pleased with the selection of Eureka. I'm similarly pleased with item number six, which is the reconstruction, reconstruction of uh, 6th Avenue North. Uh, it's deserved attention for many years. It's been problematic for many of those who both commute and live in <coughs> North Loop. Uh, and I'm thank you to staff for all the work they've done and not just revamping this street, but uh, also keeping, uh, keeping its historical context. Any further discussion on those items? Seeing none, uh, clerk call the roll then on items uh, from the Transportation Public Works Report, items two through 11. Council Member Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. 
Those items are adopted on item one, uh, the municipal consent for the blue line uh, LRT uh, extension. Council member Yang. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm speaking to this uh, feeling like I have a sense of where the vote is gonna uh, go, but um, I wanted to say that um, I'm, I'm voting against municipal consent for the Botno light rail line today. And um, you know, I just wanna point out that I'm not interested in relitigating the stops, the routes, or the process, but there are things that I would like to have seen differently. And I know that this is not the time for that. Uh, I wanna uh, start out by just uh, thanking the Met Council and the Botno Project Office led by Dan Zoller, who is in the audience at this point, and uh, his staff as well as uh, our staff at uh, Public Works, especially Don Flom, who I see in the crowd. And um, I, I know that we will be able to make the best out of this project together. Uh, my concerns today are very specific and I'm addressing my comments to the states, including the Department of Transportation. Uh, there have been three pedestrian fatalities on Olson Memorial Highway in the fifth ward in the last three years. Uh, this is in addition to numerous automobile accidents, several of which have been fatal. Olson Memorial Highway needs to be shrunk. The neighborhoods I represent are not measured by the throughput of suburbanites. The neighborhoods I represent are more than high-speed entrance and exit ramps to downtown Minneapolis. The neighborhoods I represent are defined and measured by the health, safety, and well-being of my constituents. Shrinking the number of lanes on Olson Memorial Highway was one of my biggest concerns about this project and one that was raised by the city earlier last year. That request was denied by the state. Uh, my constituents' lives are worth more than the expeditious commute for someone from Buffalo, Rockford, or Plymouth. This enormous project should strengthen the ward I represent. It should promote development and it should make people safer. I urge the Department of Transportation to reconsider and to consider the lives of my constituents, the opportunity to promote development on the north side. And I ask them to reconsider their decision and shrink Olson Memorial Highway. Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. And I did raise this issue about how totally unacceptable the seven lane, six lane configuration was at Hiawatha when I supported this um, when it went through committee. Uh, since then, I'd say that my concerns have only um, been magnified. Um, I had assumed that this proposal went through our uh, um, pedestrian advisory committee and that it had some sign off in the bicycle advisory committee. Um, and then I got a memo from the pedestrian advisory committee expressing their concern and recommending that we vote to deny municipal consent. Uh, they say it very well, and I'm just gonna take up some of my time to read what um, I received from them and maybe all the council members did. The pedestrian advisory committee strongly recommends that the city council vote to deny municipal consent for the blue line extension as proposed due to the six slash seven lane Olson Memorial Highway required by MDOT. A six lane roadway, regardless of pedestrian enhancements, is incapable of meeting the city's transportation and equity goals for the immediate and surrounding areas. If built as currently required by MDOT, it will be a dangerous place for pedestrians, a barrier between neighborhoods and a powerful disincentive to use of the intended centerpiece of this project, the train. A project of this scope represents a once in a lifetime opportunity to truly reconnect the neighborhoods of North Minneapolis, enhance the safety and comfort of non-motorized users and provide a street design that informs the type of development that maximizes the two blue line stations as well as the planned Royalton station. The city of Minneapolis, the Metropolitan Council and Hennepin County have active plans to improve regional and citywide transportation options within North Minneapolis with walking, biking and transit projects beyond the blue line extension. In total, these improvements should enable Olson Memorial Highway to become a premier urban street that does not simply allow for pedestrians, but prioritizes them above regional motor traffic. The PAC is prepared to engage the city, Metropolitan Council, and MDOT on plans to allow a reduced lane roadway configuration. That's the statement from the Pedestrian Advisory Committee, and I agree with it 100%. Uh, in fact, it only, it only bolstered my position that this was a big mistake that, that shouldn't happen. Also between the committee and now, I had the opportunity to reach out to the commissioner of the Department of Transportation. Uh, my response from him is if he was interested, he was gonna look in it, look at it, and then he consulted with some of his engineers and he came back saying, this seems to be the consensus. All the engineers think 
the traffic engineers, you know, transportation engineers seem to think it needs to be a six lane, uh, seven lane um, highway as it's going down here. Well, I wish that he had been more open to looking at it and problem solving, and I think that he doesn't understand the magnitude uh, and the concerns maybe that the city has at this point. And it's important, I think, that we listen to more than the traffic engineers and the transportation engineers whose lives are all about how many cars can you get through an area in the shortest amount of time. Uh, and that is a priority. I also had the opportunity and took the opportunity to go out of my way during rush hour to ride on Oldsman Memorial Highway and check out how it works. Um, lo and behold, in Golden Valley, right before you get to the city, it's a four lane roadway. Cars are moving smoothly, everything's going effectively. This is rush hour in the morning. Suddenly when you meet, when you get to Minneapolis, it expands dramatically uh, to, uh, to six lanes. And then when you're making left turns, seven lanes, um, cars are still moving fine. And actually when I looked at it every time, there was plenty of room for us all to gather in two lanes instead of be spread out in three. No stoplight failed when we came to a chance to go. All the cars who were there stacked up, made it through um, very easily with, with lots of time to spare. Additional point, besides my little uh, investigation on my own when I talked to the commissioner and the public health, uh, uh, pedestrian advisory committee, um, was then I heard about what Crystal was getting. Um, they were going out to get municipal consent from other cities. And lo and behold, a pedestrian bridge is on the table and is going to be built. So if you're out in Crystal, you don't ha have to traverse uh, the roadway and, and it's not so horrible. They're trying to enhance it for pedestrians as well. But in the city of Minneapolis, when we're likely to have more pedestrians, in fact, if this works at all, and we're able to have the kind of development that we want and, and the connection reconnecting neighborhoods, and it probably won't work if it's gonna be built this way, um, but out in Crystal, they're getting a pedestrian bridge. Why, why couldn't we get that on Van Light Boulevard or, or Penn or something? Why can't we look at more en enhancements or, or something like that? The last thing is I, I just kept reflecting back on uh, the light rail lines that we have right now. Um, two of which touch my ward, which I'm very familiar with, often ride the train. We took one approach on, on, uh, on, the, on the blue line, extension one out to the airport. We said, oh my goodness, there's a really big highway here that the Department of Transportation probably needs and we have to move all these cars back and forth, back and forth. Let's not touch it. Let's just leave that wide open in place and we'll build our light rail next to it. So we even make a bigger distance between the neighborhoods and a bigger disconnect. Well, lo and behold, on the side with the light rail, Property values have gone up, there's development that's occurring there, but generally, and certainly on the east side, without the light rail, we've been struggling. And we've got complaints and complaints about why is it so hard for me to cross this? Why do we have this Hiawatha and then the light rail? Um, and we've had accidents, public safety issues, concerns. Now, check out the next line that we built, the green line. We said, oh, let's take away some traffic lines. We're gonna put this on University Avenue. In fact, let's take all the cars off Washington when it goes through the University of Minnesota and make it sort of a transit plaza, pedestrian area. Um, I get nothing but rave reviews about that. Ridership is higher, huh? use is going well. You can still travel by vehicle on that patch of university even with the reduced lanes and, it's, and, and people don't complain about that. I haven't seen any problems with that either. Cars have found other ways to get around it if they have to um, and it's working really well. I think we need to take a stand here and we need to say um, this isn't acceptable for where it's going through Minneapolis. We've already made enough concessions. Slowing the cars down uh, a, a little bit and they're already slowed down to 40. Um, and what we're trying to do now and call pedestrian enhancements isn't enough. And I am uh, not willing to support it here at the council. And I hope there's at least a few of us that can uh, join Councilmember Yang and myself and say we need to see a little more work uh, in this area and be taken seriously about this and not just ignore it. Councilmember Andrew Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I agree with uh, my colleagues, Councilmember Yang, Councilmember Gordon, on uh, the issue of design, especially around shrinking the number of lanes. You know, in Ward 12, uh, we have probably, I think, the most light rail stops probably in the entire city, and it runs parallel uh, to a highway. And I see firsthand as people see the train coming and they decide to rush across the highway and try to catch it. And that's just having to rush across on one side from the uh, east side. Now imagine on uh, Olson Memorial Highway where you have people coming across from both sides. And when you have such a large highway uh, with so many lanes, that's a lot of distance people have to cross. And I do worry about the lives that are endangered in that process. And I think that from even a design standpoint, this is really outdated thinking. We're looking to see some development happening along the line. And when you have 
uh, such a large highway in front, I'm going to tell you that's a struggle with developers. And I talked to developers uh, trying to get them to uh, put more up on the east side, and they say, well, we're in front of a highway. We're not in front of the light rail. So we're having a lot more of that development happening and a lot more interest on the west side of things. So I would strongly encourage MnDOT and the project team to uh, not let this be a settled issue, to revisit it, to really rethink this, to listen to uh, what you're hearing today, to look at the community, to think in a different way that uh, has been done before and really factor in human behavior and what's happening here and the interests overall comprehensively of the city of developing uh, a great corridor that doesn't divide the community, but that adds to it. In terms of my vote today, I am voting yes on municipal consent. The reason for that is despite the flaws, just as there were uh, certainly council member Goodman knows with uh, Southwest light rail overall, uh, despite those flaws, I do believe that this offers more value to the city, uh, more positives than negatives. But this is a really large negative and I think it needs to be addressed, and I surely hope it is, and uh, support my colleagues uh, in their decisions as well and think that that's uh, an appropriate uh, statement. Thank you. Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just want to you know, be clear about what's before us today. This is a 30% design approval. Um, when you do a municipal consent uh, uh, vote, it's not with conditions. Um, that's just sort of the way it works, and so that's how we have to vote. Um, we have to also take in context that there's a pre-existing condition uh, of the area that we're talking about in terms of pedestrian crossings uh, that are not favorable whatsoever. And then the question is, is current design moving in the direction of a net improvement or not? And so I think that's another thing to put into the backdrop of our consideration today. We also have to you know, step back and think about what we're voting on in terms of our regional transportation system and all of that uh, work that goes in by the multiple partners and their considerations on, on the project uh, at this point. And so I wanna make sure that folks weigh uh, those considerations, what, really what procedure we have before us, the existing conditions that we're trying to modify and improve, and the, the sort of context in which we are voting as a regional uh, player amongst other players trying to create a system to support our economic uh, and transportation needs. And I'll be supporting this, of course. Any further discussion on transportation public works item number one, municipal consent for the Blue Line uh, LRT extension? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Council Member Glidden. Aye. Yang. No. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. No. Cano. No. Reich. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are nine ayes and three nays. That item is adopted. Next, we have the Ways and Means Report, uh, and that committee is chaired by Councilmember Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, Ways and Means will bring forward uh, 20 items for your consideration. This morning, um, the first is the reappointment of Patrick Todd to serve as our city assessor for a two-year term, beginning January 4th of this year. Um, the next four items are a series of legal settlements. Um, item number six is a contract with Metro Legal for legal process services from the city attorney's office. Uh, there's also number seven, a contract amendment with Canon Business Solutions for duplicating equipment. Um, the, number eight is the uh, acceptance of a low bid from Frederick Construction Company for uh, convention center exhibit hall fronts, that project. Item number nine is the lease with Safety Signs in, uh, Minnesota for outdoor storage. Ten is a lease with Verizon for the cell tower. Uh, item number 11 is the Target Center renovation project request for proposal for project financing. Item number 12 is a contract amendment with Lisa Jones for continued board training. And 13 is a contract with uh, Juan Linares for the Mercado, Mercado Central uh, project. Both of those are brought forward from the Neighborhood Community Relations Department for ex extending those contracts. Um, item number 14 is wireless Minneapolis community benefits account with, for Linway Manor. 15 is a contract amendment with First Watch Solutions for implementing Enhanced Interface uh, Services, 16, 17, 
and 18 uh, represent appointed uh, position changes and uh, uh, salary schedules for the manager of convention center, uh, deputy director, neighborhood and community relations, and the deputy city coordinator. Uh, item number 19 is the collective bargaining agreement with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 292. And the final item is the bid for Heathcraft water coils for the Minneapolis Convention Center. I'd like to move all 20 items for your approval. Councilmember Quincy has moved uh, the Ways and Means report in its entirety. Anyone want to pull anything off or discuss any of those items? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsani. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Amasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Wright. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That report is adopted. Uh, next, we have the Zoning and Planning Committee report. That report will be given by the Vice Chair of the Committee, Councilmember Andrew Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Today, we bring seven items forward. The first is an interim use permit for a cell phone tower. The second is a rezoning for 3200 Bryant Avenue South. The third is a rezoning for 3255 Garfield Avenue South. The fourth is a rezoning for 3041 Holmes Avenue South. The fifth is uh, a couple of rezonings uh, for LC Partners LLC. The sixth is an environmental assessment worksheet for the proposed Krauss Anderson block redevelopment. And our seventh item is a comprehensive plan amendment. I'd like to move all seven items on the report. Councilmember Johnson has moved uh, the zoning and planning report to all items. Any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Wright. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That report is adopted. And next we have the introduction and referral calendar. And the first is a, a notice uh, uh, of ordinance. Uh, pursuant to notice, Council Member Glidden and Quincy introduced the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to administration for first reading and referral to Committee of the Whole, adding a new Chapter 18A target market program. Any discussion on that uh, introduction? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. And next, we have a motion by Councilmember Glidden to introduce the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to planning and development small and underutilized business enterprise program for first reading and referral to the Public Safety, Civil Rights and Emergency Management Committee amending the sunset date of the small and underutilized business enterprise program. And we need unanimous consent on that. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Uh, next we have the resolution and the first resolutions and the first resolution is the National Hockey League Stadium Series honorary resolution, which we read at the beginning of the meeting. Any discussion on that resolution? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Next, we have a, a motion by Council Member Yang um, and all of us uh, to uh, for an honorary resolution honoring Dr. Noah Spencer Smith. So, Council Member Yang, you want to speak on that? What's Madam, your... sorry, Madam President, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I didn't really have much to say, but I, I do just want to say that Reverend Dr. Noah Spencer Smith was a longtime AME. Um, Pastor and he pastored at the Wayman AME uh, Church uh, in North Minneapolis, right by, um, I guess most people know it by the Harvest Academy there. And um, he he was the oldest living active minister at the time of his death and uh, a little bit over 100 years old. And so that's that was amazing. And um, just to you know, have that sort of history uh, in Minneapolis is just incredible. And so I just uh, encourage everyone to support this. Any discussion, further discussion on uh, the resolution honoring uh, Dr. Noah Spencer Smith? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Councilmember Wright, do you have a resolution? Um, Councilmember Yang? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, do you want to speak to it? Uh, yes, please, briefly. Okay. Um, the, the resolution is a something of a companion piece to of a significant um, uh, Botno LRT uh, motion that we had earlier. Uh, but this is just basically a statement that sort of highlights how we 
view these transportation uh, investments in terms of their regionality, uh, their systems importance, but also that these things don't happen in a vacuum. There's funding mechanisms that support uh, or don't support a full, complete and robust system for our transit. And this sort of highlights how one vote is not a project by project thing that we actually recognize in the broader context, both in terms of systems and also funding. And these statements are consistent with our other uh, objectives in terms of additional funding for our systems uh, moving forward at the legislature. Councilmember Reich and Councilmember Yang's uh, motion is in front of you. Any a resolution, excuse me, any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval, say Madam, aye. Madam President, sorry. I need a roll call on this oh, you one, need a roll call, okay. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Borsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That uh, item is adopted. Next, we have under new business, Councilmember Borsami gives notice of intent to introduce at the next meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to purchasing, disposal of surplus property, adding provisions related to the donation of city property. That notice is given. Are there any announcements? Seeing no announcements, uh, a motion to adjourn is in order. Is there a second? Second. All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. <laughs>